Retro Days. It's your 11th birthday, 1980-something or other, and a mind-boggling assortment of wrapped packages are spread out on the table before you. Brightly colored paper and bows dazzle your eyes, and you can't help but imagine the endless fun you're going to have with all of these new toys. Still, somewhere in the recesses of your young mind, you acknowledge not every present is going to be a winner. Some of your friend's parents are out of work, other kids are only there because your parents are friends with their parents, and let's be honest, a few of your buddies are real buttheads and they're just there to mooch the free cake. In this video, we'll open those crappy presents together, and before they get tossed in the garbage, we'll play with five forgotten toys of the 1980s. After decades of restrictions preventing the airing of any programming based on a toy line, in 1983 the FCC reversed many of their decisions from a landmark 1969 ban. The floodgates had opened and Mattel was first to rush through with He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. We must stop his evil power! By the mid-80s there was a seemingly endless stream of cartoons airing on television, each with their very own Get It While You Can shiny new toy line. The 1980s became a golden age of consumerism and toy production, but with so many options, many were bound to disappear into obscurity. What follows are five of these forgotten toys, listed in no particular order. How many will you remember? Number five on today's list is Manglors. Manglors was a 1984 toy from Ideal, whose marketing strategy hinged upon the toy's ability to be temporarily destroyed. You can stretch them, squash them, take them apart, they'll return almost like new to their original forms. Almost like new to their original forms. Slyly slipping the word almost into their commercial didn't save Manglors from being rated one of the worst Christmas toys of the year by the ADA Consumer Panel. Manglers were also rated as one of the messiest, along with Baby Alive, a doll that routinely crapped itself. The main selling point of Manglors was the ability to not only tear limbs off the toy, but also put them back together. Unfortunately, it was this second part of the process children quickly found nearly impossible with the adhesive qualities of the product only lasting seconds after dismemberment. In most cases, children were left crying over a pile of detached limbs and torsos with no method to Frankenstein the pieces back together. Sucker Man comes in at number four on our list of forgotten toys of the 80s. Like Manglores, Sucker Man was all about the toy's unique properties. They were stretchable figures that could be thrown against walls and stick before slowly descending. Kind of like the little octopus toys we'd buy in 25 cent machines. Unlike the Mangalores, however, Sucker Man did enjoy some longevity. Though usually remembered as a 70s toy, having first been released in 1978, many of us recall this suction cupped oddity as it faded out of popularity in the early 80s. On a place that's smooth and slick, the suction cups will make him stick. Inching into the number three slot, not unlike Sucker Man crawling down a wall, we have Wheeled Warriors. A toy line inspired by an animated sci-fi series called Jace and the Wheeled Warriors. The series first aired on the French network TF1 and later came to the US in syndication. Although the series would have a complete 65 episode run, the toys weren't as lucky, topping out with a measly 13 item toy line. Though the vehicles were durable and easy to construct, a huge misstep in production left all the animated series characters off the set list. Instead of including the titular Jace with the toys, for instance, they packaged a generic set of figures called the Lightning League and Monster Minds Brain Figures. Otherwise, Wheeled Warriors should have had a wide appeal with kids who enjoyed playing with vehicle-centric toys. Our next pick comes soaring in at number two on our fingers? That's right, Ring Raiders were tiny airplanes that you wore on your finger with, you guessed it, an attached ring. Then you sort of, I don't know, wave your hand in the air while running around like a sugar-fueled little psycho? If you were somewhat lacking in imagination, Matchbox sold the Blaster, a joystick that made sound effects, and the Skull Squadron base, which would allow you to launch your planes. It should come as no surprise at this point that the Ring Raiders had their very own animated series, which started with a two-hour special produced by Deke Enterprises, followed quickly by five more half-hour episodes. 
The series is set in the far future of 1998 and follows the Skull Squadron, who are bent on world domination, of course. Oh, did I mention their planes can travel through time? Because their planes can travel through time. And since this is an 80s cartoon attempting to sell toys to kids, there has to be a band of good guys to fight the evil Skull Squadron, and the creators came up with the amazing, thrilling, and uniquely creative name, Justice Crew. Heard enough? Yeah, so did the kids of the 80s. Coming in then at number one is Starcom, a sci-fi toy line that includes magnetic action figures and vehicles, allowing for interactive play in a space-themed setting. Yet again, we have a toy line that was promoted with a short-lived animated series, Starcom The U.S. Space Force, also produced by Deke Enterprises. Like so many others, Starcom struggled to find a foothold in the oversaturated market of the 1980s. Besides having magnetic parts which allowed figures to stand on their vehicles, there was also a mechanical feature called Power Deploy which would transform vehicles and open compartments. These interactive elements were a boon to the toy line and one of the main selling points. Like so many other cartoons of its time, the series itself was a good versus evil scenario, this time featuring evil Shadow Force led by Emperor Dark, yeah, Emperor Dark, seriously, fighting against the titular Starcom Astro Marines. The failure of Starcom is cited as one of the reasons for Coleco's bankruptcy and subsequent sale to Mattel. Though Starcom's run in America ended, it found renewed life until 1990 in Europe, making it perhaps one of the most popular toys we've covered today. And so ends our list of five forgotten toys of the 1980s. But before we go, I've saved a bonus forgotten toy to add to our list of misfits. And so our bonus pick is Boglins! Created for Mattel by Tim Clark, also known for work on the Dark Crystal and Fraggle Rock, these goblin-like puppets were released amidst creature movies like Critters and Gremlins, helping to launch them into popularity. Chances are, if you know any of the toys on today's list, it'll probably be Boglins. This particular toy did have a much larger following than our other selections today, boasting a run from 1987 all the way to 1994. In fact, this last pick isn't necessarily forgotten for the same reasons as many of the other toys we discussed, but rather this was a niche product that may have simply flown under your radar. Due to a renewed interest, I may or may not have written a few impassioned letters myself, Tim Clark successfully kickstarted a new line of Boglins back in 2020. If you missed their re-release, this happens to be one of the nostalgic toys you can still easily purchase online from major retailers. Well, you've opened all your presents, cake is gone, and your parents are passed out in the bedroom. I'd call this birthday party a raging success. Sure, not all the gifts were winners, but I think we'd agree that years later, with a bit of nostalgic sheen, most of these toys make for a wonderful addition to any enthusiast's collection. With that then, I'm curious, which of the toys on our list do you remember? Heck, which ones do you still have? I would love to hear about it down in the comments. And if you enjoy our content, please consider liking the video, subscribing to our channel, or maybe even activating that ubiquitous little notification bell. It really does make a huge difference. I'll see you next time for another dose of nostalgia right here on Retro Days. Clicky, clicky.